what's going on everybody so as you can see from the title in the background this is a friday night smackdown review um my x-man 97 review is right after this and uh my my mr balling reaction i know i've been slacking been it's been a uh crazy couple of days Bert celebrating birthday and other people's birthday I, I literally my nephew's birthday is right after mine's and then you know my brother's birthday is coming up so it's like i gotta it's just been a hectic week but with that being said that's dive right into this friday night smackdown and this friday night smackdown was good i liked it i enjoyed it i really did let me uh stop the music all right now that the music is stopped um i guess i'll keep it right here yeah uh this they of course started off with uh as they always do after a pay-per-view they just recap what happened especially when it comes to roman reigns and cody rose and cody rose will be the one to kick off friday night smackdown and he will start he will basically come out and um and basically welcome the crowd talk about uh, thanking the crowd and talking about his victory at wrestlemania uh but his the main thing about his promo was that he talked about uh the uh the, the uh, qualifying match I mean, the, uh, there was—I guess there was go, there was going to be—he revealed there was going to be, and well, he didn't say it all the way, but he mentioned all six competitors. Uh, but Corey Graves, you know, basically confirmed that there would be two triple threat matches to determine who would face uh, Cody Rose at Backlash in France, um, which is in three weeks. Um, the uh the three comp all, the six competitors was going is will be L.A. Knight, Bobby Lashley, and Santos Escobar, uh K.O. Ray Mysterio and A.J. Styles. They will all be participating in separate triple threat matches, and the winners of those triple threat matches will go on to face each other next week to determine the number one contender for. Cody Rhodes. Um the the rumors were true. The title, even though they still have a little, I don't know what is going on with the uh with the uh title screen. Like how you see how it says right here, the Friday Night SmackDown. You know when Cody Rhodes come out and his title, they they and they show him and they, they show his name and they showed him that he's the WWE Universal Champion, but Everybody refers to the championship as, as basically the undisputed WWE championship again. Uh, basically, the Universal Championship is uh, retired officially, and that new belt is just the WWE championship belt, like I thought it was. Um, and then he he just reminded everybody who was participating in these triple threats who he is. He said he went from undesirable to undeniable to now your WWE uh, undisputed champion. Uh, then we get a bloodline uh, backstage uh, promo where uh, d uh, where Paul Heyman, Solo, and Jimmy they get ready to go into the locker room, but see that the uh, locker room is now is Cody Rose, no longer the bloodline, but it's Cody Rose locker room, and. Paul Hammond explains to Solo and Jimmy that winning and losing matters and that uh, as, and when you lose, there are consequences. That's the champion's uh, locker room now, and Cody Rhodes is the champion. Uh, and that the only way we get our locker room back is if we bring the WWE Undisputed Championship back to the bloodline by orders of the uh tribal chief and that's going to be uh, slung around a lot in here in the field but we get to our first match of the night which is uh the first of uh, two triple threat um matches uh which is la Knight versus Bob bobby lassie versus santos Escobar. um uh, 
this was a good one. Uh, it looked like Bobby Lashley was having a, a little bit of a wardrobe malfunction, but other than that, this was a good uh, match. Uh, yeah, Bobby Lashley said they they had that amazing like Tower of Doom spot uh, in the match. The, um, Bobby looked good. Santos even looked good. And um, I don't think I got it written down here. Um, no, I didn't. But it was, uh, I guess it was a, like a, a interview like earlier in the day before the show started with uh, uh, with a guy with Delphi attachment and Santos and them said that they wasn't the ones who attacked Dragon Lee. Uh, the reason why I have to mention that because it goes into what happened after the match. Um, but yeah, the match was good. I enjoyed it. This was a great opener for the show. And LA Knight would get the victory to move on to who to move on to next Friday um uh, to the number one contenders match. And now what I mean was the LWO, or more importantly, Ray Mysterio with LWO at his side, they would talk about uh the uh his triple threat match later on tonight, and that Ray says that he got one more uh he knows that he got one more run in him as the uh champion. But they they also talk about how uh Santos said that uh because it was asked uh how did he feel about Santos said that they wasn't the one to attack Dragon Lee and Dragon Lee is standing there, so Dragon Lee do not it, it, it's been at least confirmed here, Dragon Lee do not know who attacked him. Because Dragon Lee didn't dispute or nothing, he just he was confused as much as everybody else when they when they trying to say they wasn't the ones attacking him. But Ray Mysterio said he doesn't believe it, and that uh, the truth will come out eventually of who attacked Dragon Lee. Uh, then we get the official Bloodline in ring promo where uh, uh, Paul Heyman uh, comes out and basically. Uh, offers no excuse uh, by orders of the uh, tribal chief. That's that. Uh, that's that phrase again. That they come out here with no excuses. They don't blame the Rock. I mean, not the Rock, but they don't blame John Cena. They don't blame uh, Undertaker there, and they don't even blame Seth Rollins. And he mentions the difference between WrestleMania 39 and WrestleMania 40. Where WrestleMania 39, uh, Cody uh, Cody Rhodes came in emotional. And not focused while Roman came in focused, ready, and strategic. And he said that uh, it was uh, Cody's fault that he was to prepare for Solo and allow Solo to distract him, which allowed Roman Reigns to take advantage. And then he said, just like that, Roman Reigns uh, successfully defended the title. But he said, here at WrestleMania 40, Cody flipped, uh, flipped the script. This time, he was the one who came in focused. <clears throat> ready and strategic while Roman Reigns was the one who thanks to everything became distracted and took his eye off the ball. Prefer more importantly, preferring to the part where he had the chance to hit um, Cody with a chair, but he also had a chance to hit himself with a chair and he could, he gave him to temptation. He gave him to his desire to get revenge and he hit Seth Rollins with it, which they saying is him taking his eye off the ball. And uh, uh, just like that, Cody Rose is your new uh, Dirty Undisputed Champion. Uh, and he was getting ready to say, but like a phoenix rising from the ashes. But Solo would stop him. <clears throat> and Solo would reiterate what Paul Hammond told him in the backstage uh, portion of earlier that uh that w uh, winning and losing matters right right like and paul hammond said yeah he said so look with more specifically when it comes to losing losing matters and and there must be consequences for losing right and he was like yeah and then he he, he made it look like he was about to do something to paul hammond but then he just moves Paul Hammond to the side and he looks at Jimmy and Jimmy like what me he said you go you what you, you try to he said it's me he said I'm big bro he said man come on man like he, he, you know he tells so I'm warning you like he he feel like Saul was getting ready to tackle but Saul just 
you know, stretch out his hands, go in for the hood. And he just says, I love you. I love you. He said, and Jimmy, like, okay, I love you too, bro. Like, all right, I thought you was about to try to do something. You know, he tried to dap him up. But then he would be attacked from behind. Tama, I think I said it right. Is it Toma or Tama? Tama um, Tonka. Um, I, think, I think that's their cousin. Uh, part of the bloodline, you know, the actual cousin, you know, part of their bloodline. He made his debut as we've been hearing for a long time that he had signed with WWE and that he was going to make his debut. Some people thought it was going to be at WrestleMania, but it was here. He made his debut and he attacked Jimmy. And it seemed like it was on the orders of Solo Sokoa. And Solo Sokoa trying to be the new tribal chief. It certainly seemed like it from way how this uh how this SmackDown was going. It seemed it seemed like, at least for right now, <clears throat> Solo is calling the shots. Um Solo and uh Tonga would beat down on Jimmy and uh, with Solo uh helping. Uh, a little, well, not helping, but he stopped him, and then he just gave him like three, like two to four uh, Samoan spikes, and then they would raise their hands in the air, raise their ones, and they went. They he brought Paul over. Well, first he brought Paul over. The Paul thought he was going to attack him, and Paul, you know, while he while they was beating on Jimmy, you could hear Paul in the background yelling and saying, "This is not what the Tribal Chief wants." Um. But they would bring uh, Paul over so they all could hold their ones in the air. And as they were doing so, like Paul, like this, he got his one in the air, but his other hand, he's like, call Roman. And then uh, Solo, like, give me that phone. He's like, he throws the phone down, stumps on it. And so while he thought he was getting ready to get beat up, they go back to beat up Jimmy again. He tells uh, Jimmy, I mean, Solo instructs uh, Tama to go get a chair and they put it around his head. So uh solo and then with solo saying, I love you. Um and then he would go and do he would do that uh that hip uh well that hip attack uh, with the chair on the Jimmy like it basically looked like they knocked Jimmy unconscious and then uh they will all leave the ring together what with, with Paul Hammond looked like he was forcefully uh anyway um and then that would be uh that would be it for a while. That's still not the end of this though. In the day night for the bloodline. Uh we will get to the second match, uh, which is Cameron Grimes versus Braun Breaker. Now, this was uh this was a quick like a quick five. I said it's like about five minutes, so it's nothing really to say here. Pretty much a squash match for uh Braun Breaker with Braun Breaker getting the victory. So it's simple, just like the match. Um, I hope Cameron Grimes get a better uh, shake than this, though. He deserves so good. He was very popular in NXT, and he deserves a better shake than this. Um, AJ Styles would cut a promo about the, uh, his triple threat match, saying that uh, it, it's saying that what he does to uh, uh, Kevin Owens and Ray is not personal. Is uh, this is just about him getting to? That uh, championship, and that, um, and that when he wins, when he uh, this is only what he does in that match is only a taste of what LA Knight is going to get um, when uh, when he uh, faces LA Knight and make things right about what happened at WrestleMania. And then we get a Bailey promo where Bailey uh, where Bailey's new music. I guess they keep it from uh, WrestleMania. Uh, Bailey uh basically comes out to celebrate her championship win and looks uh, and talks about the female roster, uh the best having the best female roster and look what's to come next. And that she she announced that she will be defending her title, not even at the pay-per-view, but as soon as next week against someone, but she would get interrupted by Tiffany Stratton, who complains that, that she was upset that she didn't have an opportunity at WrestleMania, but that she should be the one that uh that faces her for the championship. Um uh, that if she if she was getting ready because she's like you get ready to open do an open challenge. Well, then I'm here to accept that open challenge. But Bailey says that she wasn't actually about to do an open challenge, 
but announced that but announced that she wanted to face that she was just going to face this opponent and the opponent being Naomi and Naomi will uh, 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 Tiffany will assault verbally assault Naomi before Naomi came out and told her look you might have beat me once but you're not going to beat me again and I, though I want to accept your uh, proposal Bailey not just yet because I gotta be I gotta whoop this uh whoop this little girl's butt uh thus we get the next match um but before we get to that match this will be the last of the bloodline segment of the night where uh they go to interview paul about uh what it, about jimmy's condition with uh paul being asked how is jimmy condition okay like how is jimmy and is jimmy fine and paul Hammond looks like he just wanted to say not at all he did shake his head no, shake his head no. And like he was about to say not at all, but he was getting interrupted by Tama, who told him by orders of the tribal chief. And, um, like I said, that word for some reason, that phrase was just was going wrong. And, and then Tama looked at it, trying to look all intimidating at Paul Hammond. Then he would back away. Then Solo would come in the frame, he would go like this. You know, with his thumb, and he's just said, "Hmm," and then and then walks away. Uh, and then we get to the third match, which is Naomi versus Tiffany, which is considered a number one contenders match. Uh, this was good. Uh, this was this was very good. Naomi did her thing. Uh, Naomi, it, she looked it good. Had she looked it better? than uh normal because she actually looked like a uh a, a, a true contender they didn't make her look like a jobber but they didn't make tiffany look like a jobber either so that's a plus they didn't make tiffany look like a jobber but they didn't make uh naomi look like a job they look both looked strong with uh naomi i would rather naomi got a finisher uh victory here but she just got like a roll-up victory over tiffany stratton uh, but either way, Naomi is the winner, and she will face Bailey next Friday for the WWE Women's Championship. Uh, we then get a, a backstage promo where they, they where it is revealed that the Street Profits and the New Cash Republic are looking at a video package of uh, uh, Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Uh, Basically, uh, it's like a video package celebrating that they victory of becoming the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And uh, it, it was, I think it was later revealed that there's going to be another one contenders match for that uh, with, between the Street Profits, New Cash Republic, uh, AO, and AOP. It might be, a, it, I think it was another team in that too, but I can't remember. But I do remember that the three would be. I know it would be Street Profits versus AOP versus New Catch Republic. Um, then we will get a Logan Paul uh, promo, basically him talking himself about still uh, being the United States champion and how all the uh, the all the people, most of the the millions of people who the millions and impressions and people that watch it came from his camp. And came came from his camp. I so speed. Um, all that, like all that, was because of him and his prime. And that uh, we're he, as he calls it, we're in the uh, official uh, Logan. What he called the Lo, the Logan Paul Levesque era. I'm like, wow, wow. You really it's the Paul Levesque era, but you are gonna call it the Logan Paul Levesque era? Okay. Uh, but then get to maybe the my most my I don't want to say I didn't like it, but it was just like it it proves that it proves something at the moment. And what I mean is we get to a tag team match. Apparently this was set up because Piper Nevin and uh Chelsea Green wanted a uh opportunity and they came to sell themselves to Nick all this in a way of saying that they should be drafted to SmackDown 
And Nick Alden said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to find you some opponents to give you an opportunity with. Um, and it will be, the, like I said, the fourth match will be Chelsea Green and Piper Nimmer versus <sighs> Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. I did not want Jay and Bianca in a tag team. I said that I said that in the in my videos and I think in my separate videos and in my wrestling and pit podcast videos that I didn't want them to be in no tag team. It was just no. No. God, no, this was like the worst. This is like the worst decision you could ever make, in my opinion, because because it says a lot that Jade is still not ready. And I, I I have to say it because she had one singles match on Raw, and then they put her in a media in another tag team match with Bianca. And Bianca did most of the wrestling. Bianca and Pipe, Bianca Piper, and uh even Chelsea did more wrestling than uh Jay did. With Jay got in, she pretty much destroyed Chelsea and Pender. I'm like, they really making her like the female Goldberg, and I and it makes her. It, you definitely tell she she's not ready, and they you could tell they sticking her with Bianca because they they want her to learn from Bianca, but they also making her learn through the actual wrestling being on TV, which I said they should do, but I just didn't want them to do it in a tab match. But yeah. Uh, Jay Cargill and Bianca will get the victory, and I'm guessing they're gonna be going after the the uh ta- the women's tag team titles eventually down the line. And then we get to the main event, but before we get there, we got Kevin the Kevin Owens um uh, promo that basically kickstarts the main event with Kevin Owens being interviewed backstage uh by Byron Saxton uh about uh about the triple threat match and he and he talks and he talks about it but he asked he told about it do you you see have you seen what they've been doing lately with the cameraman following the wrestlers out to the ring and he said you bet you know is that he said yeah he said you mind as i take the uh microphone he said sure and by uh uh cold uh, ko i was like say say everybody else's name but um kevin owens uh also i, I forgot to mention um when the bloodline in that beginning part uh with the bloodline tried to go into the locker room it was kevin owens who uh who went in there first and he told him uh he like, excuse me sorry sorry you're not invited uh there's a broom closet down the hall and he will go into cody rose locker room uh i forgot to mention that earlier but uh yeah kevin owens basically talked about his about his victory he took a uh he took a championship out with him it was one of those commemorable ones, the ones that uh that they've been making for the, the the particular you know football or basketball teams uh championship they be making. He took that one out for the for the Detroit Lions. And uh basically we're just talking about how he's gonna whoop he's gonna whoop everybody's butt and uh win and go on to face uh LA Knight and then eventually Cody Rhodes. Thus this starts the uh, the triple threat main event. This was a good main event. I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad. You know, it really wasn't. It wasn't bad. It was good. It was good. Um, Kevin, I, you know what I would say about it? I loved it. The, what I loved the most about this over the first triple threat was that AJ, uh, Kevin, and Ray all worked well together in this match. They worked well. This match was was like at least five times better than that first triple threat match just because they gel, they work well together. Moves was smooth and transcendent. It's like they just hit perfect moves like that. Uh, like that uh part where Ray, where was Kevin hit that uh that flip uh that monkey flip on Ray and uh right into uh right into AJ Styles and AJ Styles hit the move on Ray like that was just so cool. And even how AJ Styles won doing a style, uh, Avalanche Styles class on, on, on Ray on top of Kevin Owens and Penn's Ray Mysterio. Um, and thus, AJ Styles and LA Knight will face each other yet again next week for the number one contendership to see who will face Cody Rose at Backlash. 
and LA Knight would actually get in the ring and draw Jack with AJ Styles as the show goes off the air. This was a good one, man. This was really good. Um, like I said, this I enjoyed this. This was a good SmackDown after uh SmackDown after Ref- WrestleMania. We got a, a surprise, uh, uh, you know, well, not so much a surprise because we knew he was coming, but it was still a surprise to the way he sold up uh, Tama Tonka. Uh, uh, we got an amazing storyline with Jimmy. Where did he go from here? Uh, a lot of people, uh, I just don't, I don't know what they're doing with the AOP because AOP, AOP is also like trying to go for the tag team titles and SmackDown, I guess. Not SmackDown, but um, NXT, and now they trying to go for the SmackDown ones too. I don't know, but overall, I would give this episode of Friday Night SmackDown. I give it. A, I I want to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm giving it an eight out of ten. Big ups because it was better than a seven. It was better than a seven. It was an eight. It was an eight. But uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, WWE review. You hit this button right there for all of my WWE reviews. And if you enjoy the video so much, you want to support the channel, you can do is hit those buttons. As always, if you want these videos for more of my amazing, so amazing videos, and stay t- and stay tuned for my X Men '97 review. So yeah, peace.